Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome to Science Faith Connection, a segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we're going to be talking about the origin of human races. Fuzz, good to have you in the studio today. Jeff, thanks. So before we get into the discussion of science and what does science have to say about where did the races come from, as a Christian apologist, how would you characterize or describe why we have the races that we do? Well, I think largely the biblical text is silent on the origin of the races. We do have the Tower of Babel where mm -hmm. the human language was confounded and people were forced to scatter. And so presumably as a result of that event, racial diversity originates in, in the human population. But that's really the best we could do from a, from a biblical perspective. So, so the idea there would be you've got all of humanity there and just as they spread across the globe, races develop somewhere after the original, uh, original human pairs, if you will. Yes, exactly. Okay. So let's kind of switch over then to the scientific uh, explanation. What What's, what's the scientific, current state-of-the-art scientific explanation for that? Yeah, well, you know, um, right now, um, uh, many people believe they've got a really good explanation for how uh, racial diversity or regional diversity originates mm -hmm. in humans. And in many respects, today, the, the model for the origin of humanity has similarities to the biblical model, where it's referred to, roughly speaking, as the out-of-Africa model, where you have a humanity originating recently, about 100,000 years ago in a single location, East Africa, from a relatively small population of individuals mm -hmm. that then began to migrate around the world through the Middle East into Asia, Europe, and then ultimately into the Americas. And, and so it's believed that when a relatively short period of time, regional diversity originates in humanity where the first humans likely looked very similar to African people groups today. So in some sense, the, those explanations look very similar. I mean, right. th there may be differences obviously in there, but that seems very similar. Has that always been the case with the scientific explanation? That, that wasn't what I recall from my early, you know, like I was in high school biology, if you will. Right, well, uh, much of the, the views on the origin of racial diversity was shaped by an idea called multi-regionalism, uh, which is this idea that humanity began about two million years ago as mm -hmm. a, in a primitive form, and that this primitive human form migrated to different parts of the world, and then in different regions of the world independently evolved from a primitive form to a modern form. Mm. But because these groups were largely isolated, as a result, you know, regional differences or racial differences emerged. And so, you know, it, the view was always that racial diversity would have been something that would have required about two million years to emerge. Mm. And so with the out of Africa model being proposed, one of the serious challenges was how do you explain the origin of racial diversity mm -hmm. in such short order? Uh, which is a similar problem that many people leveled against the biblical text. Well, how can you explain the origin of racial diversity in a biblical model uh, in a relatively mm -hmm. short order? And in response to that challenge, people working um, in anthropology today have produced really a, a viable mechanism for how in a relatively short order of time, regional differences could emerge. Th this that that change seems to be you know one from the from the scientific explanation of okay shortening the time scale on how they arose that's that's important but it also seems to have a very different flavor of how you look at racial diversity uh, you know in the out of Africa and the biblical model humanity is humanity we just have these physical differences that have changed as we've migrated around the world the multi regional approach your race is intimately tied to your evolutionary history, which now humanity is not humanity, if you will. Right. Um, what is it, that, that, that's a big, that seems like a very big change to me. It is, I mean, in the, in the current climate, racial differences among people are largely considered to be superficial differences, mm -hmm. right? That again, arose recently, where the idea is that all human beings again, have a genetic homogeneity to them, uh, 
because we all have a very recent origin from, you know, again, from that same population. Whereas in multi-regionalism, as you're pointing out, again, racial diversity reflects a, a, a long evolutionary history. And it's much more prone, I think, to being exploited for racism mm -hmm. than is the current climate. And so in the biblical model and in the recent out of Africa model, the, the, the emphasis is on the unity of humanity, right, where the regional differences are superficial. In multi-regionalism, that's not the case. So, I mean, sociologically, I'm not going to, you know, why that might have, why science might have developed that way, I, I'm not so interested. I guess the question I would have is, given the, the multi-regional idea out there, what was the evidence that actually drove it towards the out-of-Africa way of looking at things? Well, it was essentially the, the genetic unity that you see in humanity, the, and, and then the genetic differences from people groups in different parts of the world. Working backwards from that difference, it's very clear that humanity must have come from a very small population that existed recently and that the, the differences, again, are uh, differences that would have arisen in a relatively short order. So it was really the, the genetic data that, that drove the, the support for the out-of-Africa model and undermined the idea of multi-regionalism. Again, I was just I'm sitting here thinking that that is a pretty profound shift, though. And it's, it strikes me as one of these places where what science thought for a long time had philosophical implications for what does it mean to be human, where the the science as we grow as we grew our understanding, particularly with the genetic data, really seemed to drive us towards. I don't know that anybody would say, "Oh, out of Africa, yeah, that's a creation model," but it looks a lot like it. Right. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of similarities, um, you know, to be certain. And you know, to me, what's astounding is how rapidly. Again, we think regional differences could emerge. Some of it is, is just natural selection. So people living in northern latitudes actually benefit from having lighter pigmented skin because it, it allows for more efficient vitamin D synthesis. Mm -hmm. And people with darker pigmented skin, for example, living near the equator would have greater protection against the harmful effects of UV radiation, which not only prevented skin cancer, but also would prevent the loss of folic acid, uh, which is very critical for successful pregnancies. You know, the, the elongated noses are beneficial in northern latitudes where you have colder air. It's a mechanism for warming the air before it gets to the lungs. Uh, Barrel-shaped bodies retain heat in the equator. Elongated bodies more efficiently radiate away heat. But these are really superficial differences that may provide some benefit for people in, in different parts of the world. But these are the types of differences that could emerge very quickly in, in just a few generations. So uh, we understand how, how this regional diversity would have emerged, which is, again, a, a very important piece of the puzzle because it means that you know, regional differences don't require two million years to emerge as you know, multi-regionalism required. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I really appreciate your comments. You know, it really is the case that if you're trying to make an argument for the human races 30, 40, 50 years ago, the dominant scientific idea really hits at the heart that all people are human humanity, that there's not these major differences. And yet the scientific advances over the last few decades have really driven the scientific idea towards one that's very consistent. In fact, I think largely mirrors the biblical description of the races. You know, if you found this interesting and want to know how to use and how to understand this more, we encourage you to go to reasons.org and look for Fuzz's article on this. Where did the human races come from? We'll give you some insight into how do we explain the races? How does that match with what the Bible has to say? And how can we use this to go out and share the gospel?